they show up in a Spider-Man book because that's how you debut new characters. Right. They're teenage runaways. They're original runaways. Um, hmm. All right. Tyler Johnson and Tandy Bowen. Uh, also known as Ty and Tandy. Uh, Tandy has no shortening of her name. Hmm. It's just Tandy. Pretty short I mean, already. Or, t- or Dagger. <laughs> right. Which isn't shorter. No. No. Tandy Bowen was the daughter of a wealthy supermodel. She and she was, wasn't, like, being pushed into modeling by her mom. Her, she was a dancer. Like, she was a ballet dancer. Okay. Um, and, and her mom didn't really seem to care mm-hmm. about it. It was more just like, my daughter needs to be doing the things that I did. She did need love and support and nurturing, which she didn't get from her family. And uh, so she ran away from home. And so she left uh, Ohio and went when, to the big city. When with, she ran away from home, was she like, Skipping down, doing plies and <laughs> bizarre dance moves. She she does in fact do like a dance move because she's on the phone crying with her mom. She hangs up and her her dance teacher is like, "Do you have the skills? Can said skills pay the bills? Like, or you're gonna buy your way through this recital like your mother would?" And she Whoa. goes, "I can do it." And she does this big thing and she just and she's like, "Boom, mic drop," and then leaves. Okay, thank God. Because for a second I thought it was like, "I'm so emotional. I just have to." No, Tandy runs off to the big city with a head full of hope and a pocket full of dreams Uh and a Gucci bag full of leotards. (laughs) And uh, so she goes into the city and she's, by the way, she brings like a crap load of money and a very expensive bag and her very expensive coat. Like she looks like she's got money. And she goes into the middle of the Port Authority in 1983. Yeah. And so she's ripe for the picking. Uh, meanwhile, clandestinely in South Boston, there's this kid named Tyrone. He has a big bad stutter that precludes him from being able to articulate his true feelings or his true intelligence. All right. And he's pretty good at basketball, but he's inhibited socially by his stutter and his apparent learning disability. And the only person who shows him any kindness is this fellow friend of his who plays basketball with him and promises to look out for him and they both have no real future outside of high school so naturally when it's over they go off into crime Uh, Mm -hmm. they're not in it very long when they're part of like some gang so they're breaking into like a store the clerk is killed not by ty Mm -hmm. or by his friend but by a third member of this gang but it's 1983, and, and a bunch of black get teenagers get in South Boston together. who are breaking into a store. The cops show up. Uh, they're all the perpetrator. Right. And so before... And they're all shot immediately, right? Well, the friend is shot. Oh, okay. But before he is, Ty tries desperately to articulate that his friend, who's got the gun lined up in his sights, yeah. is not the perpetrator. Right. Or is not the assailant the murderer, killed well, not the, the guy. Murderer, yeah. Uh, he can't do it because of the stutter, and he's killed for his trouble. Mm. Sadly, Ty doesn't understand the social reality, which is that there was nothing he could have said that right. would have stopped that cop from killing him. <laughs> no. uh, but, but he still blames but himself. But he still blames himself, yeah. and yeah. so he flees to New York City at the same time. How does he get out? How does he get away? He just runs. Oh. There's a bunch of them. Oh, okay. And so they all just go in different directions. They scatter in different directions. Oh, I see. So, they, so Tyrone winds up in the city, in the Port Authority area, at the same time Tandy is. Okay. And... It took him forever to get from Boston to New York. Well, so I should have took the Chinatown bus. I agree. Yeah, that would have been very cheap. Uh, but he had he's, he's hungry and he's desperate and he sees this like rich-looking white girl and he's like, I don't want to do this, but I'm so hungry and I'm so desperate. Like, I think I'm going to have to rob this girl. Mm-hmm. And then someone else robs her instead. <laughs> and so he's like, ooh, screw that guy. I'm going to rob that guy. Yeah, so then he goes and tracks him down and kicks his ass and takes the purse and gives it back to Tandy. Mm. And Tandy's like, Wow, thank you. And she could see that he's like visibly miserable and shaken. She's like, yeah. you know what? Like, why don't I buy you dinner? So the two of them eat in a diner. And they connect. They connect. Yeah, they and she's like, look, I've got enough money for two rooms at a hotel of our choosing if okay. you want. And he's like, no, I don't need your handout. Like, or I, you could get just get one room. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it would be cheaper, is what I'm saying. And in fact, like, there is an implied romance between the two of them, though. Through all of my reading of Cloak and Dagger, I've never seen them actually kiss or bang. Hmm. And I gotta say... It would be weird if you saw them bang but not kiss. I mean... That's very pretty woman (laughs) That's true. The two of them are eating at the diner, and she's flashing all this green, and a gang of 'er ne'er-do-wells see them do that in the window of the diner on the outside. They case the place, they wait. Uh, Tandy comes out. Ty and Tandy are gonna go their separate ways when... She is coerced, not strong-armed, but rather uh, through through language, 
into joining them and going someplace with them. And so, you know, they're like, look, we'll, hook, we'll, we'll help you out. We'll hook you up with a nice place. And we got some jobs for you. And she's like, okay. And Ty's like, yeah, me too. Because he's like, I'm, this girl is so screwed. Yeah. I want to make sure that she's okay. So he follows along. So he goes, he gets swept up with them. Yeah. And they all get uh, knocked out and sent to Ellis Island, where apparently within the like immigration corralling station, like below Ellis Island, yeah. is actually a secret drug testing lab manufactured and created by a mob boss named Silvermane. Okay. Who has like a chemist in his employ who's trying to create synthetic heroin. <laughs> and uh, they're going to test it on these teenage runaways that they've collected yeah. from New York. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Silvermane is a Marvel Comics character. He's an ancient mob boss from Spider-Man comics. Okay. He is the leader of the Magia family. The reason why it's called the Magia family is because... If you might remember in The Godfather, they never say the word mafia, even though it's one of the best mafia movies ever yeah, made. Yeah. This is because uh, the mafia was strong-arming pop culture outlets into not using that word because they were trying to obfuscate their criminality uh, by removing that kind of verbiage in pop culture. So people didn't know That's what to amazing. refer to it. So in fact, like when the New York production team was working on Godfather, they were like, and make sure not to use the word mafia anywhere. <laughs> And right. so they don't. In right. fact, they do. And I think Godfather 2, during the Senate hearing, uh, the senators refer to it as a mafia. Right. But the Corleones make sure to say, oh, I've never heard of that. Right. Uh, <laughs> is it just That's a word you're using, that you yeah. created. Yeah. Uh, We're just business persons. But my guess is that there's something similar happening in the comic book publishing world, mm -hmm. because they don't use the word mafia either, either and the Magia family was created. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like Magia was like the Marvel Universe equivalent of the mafia. It was that there's actually a family, capital M, the Magia family, and there's like, you know, of a, a flow chart of families that come from that one that one place. Okay. okay. So it sounds like mafia, but it's not expressly the mafia. Yeah. I would love to have been, if I were roped up in the mafia, to have gotten that job. Uh, you're going to be handling the movies and, the, and, and, and TV arm of pop culture. Right. You're going to do the uh, newspapers and funny comics. <laughs> Okay, boss, I'm going to go over to Marvel and strong arm that Stan Leibowitz and tell him not to use our word. Like, really? In any case, Silvermane's in charge of the Magia family, and he right. creates this, like, synthetic heroin den, which, uh, you know, so they're just, like, lining kids up and stabbing them with needles. And Is it just that, like, it's easier to create heroin, or no, they're hoping, is it hard to find they're, heroin? They're hoping, to import it, right? they're they're hoping to cut out the import yeah. and just be like, if we can make it here on our own, we don't have to worry about, like, the importing, we don't have to worry about paying off different countries and different, like, If we can make it here, cartels. why don't we just grow it? <laughs> Well, that's true. Well, well it's harder. Get, the government, you know, can see your your poppy fields. Yes. You know. The other thing about synthetic is often with synthetic drugs, you can like adjust like the potency yes. to your desired level more easily than with like an organic. This is true. Thing. Yeah. So uh, it kills all the kids. It doesn't work. Except. Except for cloak and dagger. Yeah. In fact, it does more than. Not kill, them. kill them. It also gives, gives them, them powers. powers. It's like the opposite of killing them. <laughs> yeah, so it makes them super powerful. They get superpowers from, from synthetic, synthetic heroin. heroin. Yes. yes. That's the origin of their powers. Yeah. Well, that it's, sucks. I guess it's not synthetic <laughs> heroin then, right? No, they it's power granting stuff. Yeah. No, it is synthetic. It's, like they it's, failed to make synthetic heroin. But we did make <laughs> power granting <laughs> chemicals, Oops. but only if it works on the genetic structure of these two people. Oh. Also, like... Ah, uh, let's try it with a different group of kids. That's really, yeah, like, no. It, it kills all the kids. It's actually kind of gross that, like, yeah. they, they, uh... They don't, like, they melt do, into a pile. Dude. No, they do feel horrible. Like, they feel like they're dying. Mm. And they're, like, they're, like, lying in this den of dead children. Yeah. And then eventually they just free themselves and jump in the river. And they get shot at. And they just, they desperately try to swim to shore. And as they swim to shore, uh, Ty, like, sinks into the water. And he gets enveloped in just darkness. He's just completely surrounded by void. Mm. And he's, like, oh. And he's not, he's not drowning. But he is, like, being enveloped in just utter blackness. And then when he finally gets his head above water, he sees just this beacon of light from ahead of him and it's a dagger and she's emanating this light mm -hmm. and she guides his way to her and then the two of them like help each other swim to shore and then they discover that they they, they find the same group of assholes that enlisted them in the first place and she like throws light daggers at them by mm. accident and stabs them to death with light whoa and uh, nice. that's a hard light construct right there and, and those that don't die are enveloped in cloaks like shadow form because they don't have like a structured body anymore it's just like a it is like a, it's like a silhouette. Yeah. 
And uh, later when he's like, does he full physically of, have a body though? He has like a he has like the shape of a body, an outline of a body, but it's like two dimensional in the comic, and it's just just stark black. But he has so a face though. He does have a face that comes through. Ah. So you can punch his face, but if you try to punch him in the gut, it would just like sink into nothing. Pretty much, yes. And in fact, while he's like wailing against his misfortune, he grabs like a big piece of fabric and drapes himself in it because he's so cold. Right. And that becomes the cloak. Nice. And, uh, da- oh, okay. By the way, Dagger's outfit is actually her leotard from her dance recitals. Yeah. She was going to wear that for her dance recital? She Did cut it? out the dagger. What was she going to say? Was the dagger there? Or? No. no. I was going to be Excalibur. <laughs> <laughs> now that would have been great. Uh, that's her stage name. Yeah. But uh, what's interesting is th- the you might find Dagger's costume provocative. Hmm. You would not be alone. <laughs> it, it turned heads back when it came out. Yeah. I mean... People were like, hey, you can't have that be a costume. <laughs> He's like, technically, she is clothed from head to toe. Yeah. Now, that being said, That's... she does have missing fabric from her cleavage to her navel. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. Uh, but somehow they got away with it, I yeah. guess, because it's totally hot. <laughs> so... <laughs> Cloak and Dagger are formed, and they have a new mission in life, and it is to kill people who prey on teenage runaways in New York City. Okay. That is... sense. Okay. That is a very that's specific a very good niche background to build. Since that's what they came from. Right. Like, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah they're the Batman of teenage runaways. Yeah. Uh, so... Okay. Cool. And Cloak, of course, by the way, like, you know, his powers are... You've seen him in other comics. Like, he can teleport and stuff. Uh, he can also, like, pull... He seemingly has, like, an endless supply of darkness and whatever. Yeah, he can suck anything in. Yeah, yeah. And, and it can and, and as much of it as possible. Right. So. But can he also expel things after he sucked them in? Yeah, he can spit them back yeah. out. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. The he fact could, is... He can take it with him, right? And then yeah. Transport, oh, yeah. He teleports and then he releases... Yeah. Exactly. So, where does it go? Is there, like, a dimension yes. or something? Okay. He yeah, is a isn't portal. Isn't void dimension or he's, he, dimension? he is the portal to a dark dimension. It's One not the dark dimension, but right. it is a dark dimension of, like, of, of emptiness and blackness and death. Okay. So there and when you go there, you would just see nothing. It's not like you go and there's, like, a landmass and you hang out and you wait until he comes against no. you. No. <laughs> it's not like being in the have. Pokeball or whatever. It's just... <laughs> Just being... It's actually what my Wait, old what priest... what happens in the Pokeball? I thought you were just energy. Yeah, and then you go into, like, dormancy? No, apparently, like, it's, like, a house you, like, hang out in. Really? Yeah. I mean, this is in the cartoon, yeah. so, you know, they took some liberties, I'm sure. I'm sure like, in the card game, it's much more different, but... Uh, I don't know. I'm not really a Pokemon fan, so right. I don't really know. But... <laughs> but you know there's a house in there. But I do know that, like, Pikachu just, just kicks it back there. Right. Anyway, like he's conscious and doing stuff. Right. In the ball. Yes. Yeah, but like that's probably because it's I... Pikachu and like it's a super special Pokeball. Yeah, so, it, I think it is a special I ball. I thought they were like digitized. Yeah, they all I mean because like they a... come become energy and go yeah. into a ball they can't fit in. Yes. Right, yeah. Yeah, I think they should go into dormancy, but again, someone in the comments will let us know. Sure. But uh Cloak is constantly besieged by this feeling of hunger, oh. this gnawing, ravenous hunger, and he Does needs he to eat? feed. Uh no. Okay. That's well, ironic. maybe that so would always be fixed hungry, by having a snack. I agree. No, but he uh, he's have not, some carrots, man. He's not hungry for that. He's hungry oh. for the light. Because as it turns out, hey, a uh, big uh, reveal for those of you out there who might believe in like God or Buddhism. Uh, no, we're all made of like light. Uh, when a person is alive, they also have like light energy, and that yeah. can be like extinguished and when you die your light energy is extinguished but it could also be like drawn from you by those who feed on it and cloak is one of those beings because of his access to this dark dimension so cloak feeds on light energy and dagger is constantly supplying light energy and they're both intrinsically connected by the fact that dagger makes this overabundance of light energy right if it Which goes, Cloak needs, but at the same time, like... But if she if it goes unchecked, she will explode oh. from the overactive... So she needs him to okay. absorb the extra energy. Yes. And I was going to ask. He needs her to satiate his ravenous hunger. Because normally when they're out, like, killing people, he's <laughs> absorbing their light energy sure. and slaking his hunger. But when they're just hanging out, she can give him light, and then that makes him... Normal again. I see. Not normal enough to, like, get a job. No. <laughs> but normal enough to, like, not complain about being hungry all the time. Right. Which he often does. Okay, so it's... these are teenagers. Yes. Yeah. And one of them has an insatiable hunger. Yeah. yeah. And the other one 
uh, will get so pent up that she'll explode. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's not a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And they need each other. And they, they only through each other can they... Yes, only through their heterosexual I'm fairly certain that's their banging. The <laughs> yeah.